amazing love that welcomed me, the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. So
but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Good morning, Sola. Welcome to our live stream service. We're glad you're here. We miss you. God bless you. It's so good to see a full praise team on the stage. We're so thankful for you guys. And I know they can't hear you, but send them a little bit of love and thanks for what they're doing, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so much. Thank you all. Thank you. We appreciate you. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus that's gotten us through every week of this pandemic. Thank you for the blood that's provided strength and health and stability for all of us. Thank you for the blood that's given us righteousness when we needed righteousness, grace when we needed grace. Thank you, God, for the beautiful blood of Jesus that was sacrificed so specifically and intentionally but brutally for, this, for the remission of our sins and for us to have life and hope in you, Jesus. We thank you, we honor you, we glorify you. In Christ's name, amen, amen. I know you're at home. But find somebody at home and give them a big old hug and tell them you love them. Uh, we're not going to quite do that here yet. It's coming soon. I feel it's coming soon, but not quite yet. Love on them at home as we transition here. God bless you. We love you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all did a great job. A great job. A great job. I love you, too. Love you, too. God bless you. Yeah, that's a great idea, Charles. Helping the ladies down. Thank you very much. Thank you guys again. Thanks so much for your effort and your time. Well, I am so excited to be announcing what I'm about to announce. Um, we are opening up again for services next Sunday, May 17th. Praise God. Next Sunday, May 17th. But because of the recommendations um, and social distancing, we've got to handle that a little differently. Um, we're, we're going to be opening up for two services next Sunday, okay? Um, we'll be gathering a little bit differently than we were before. We'll be gathering at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Now, because we have to social distance and we're limited in our capacity, we're going to do this two ways. The 9 o'clock service, we are asking that all of the families that are connected with our church, if the first letter of your last name is A through M, A through M, come to the 9 o'clock service, all right? If the first letter of your last name is N through Z, come to the 11 o'clock service. Now, what that'll do is that'll limit our capacity, but it'll also give everybody an opportunity to come to the church next Sunday for a worship service. Every other row of the chairs will be removed or roped off and we will, when, when we dismiss the service, we will do some cleaning and disinfecting um, between services, before services and after services, so it'll be good and disinfected. And uh, we ask that all families sit together when you come. So we will not have children's ministry, but you and your children come together and sit in the sanctuary uh, together as a family. Now, we're not concerned about the children. We want you to be comfortable bringing your children um, if you have a tablet or a phone that they can do an activity on to keep them busy, if you feel like they won't um, or they will be distracted or the, that you'll be distracted, give them something to do. We'll also provide for them some type of activity. I think Pastor uh, Brittany is going to put together some nice little packets for the kids to do while you're here. Uh, so come with your families. The service will be shortened. We'll have a one-hour service at 9 o'clock and a one-hour service at 11 It'll be shortened in this manner. We'll have two songs of worship and the message, all right? So we come in. We'll get started promptly on time. I know that's something we usually don't do. We, we gather and we like to fellowship a little bit, but we'll start at 9. We'll start at 11 for a one-hour service. Now, if you are comfortable um, and wearing a mask, please do so. Um, you can bring your own mask, or we'll have a few masks here if you want to. 
We're not going to police that. All right. We know the recommendations. I think all of us have heard the recommendations ad agnosium about what people are expecting or what people are doing. So we want you to be comfortable with whatever level of exposure or protection you want. Okay. So we're going to do our due diligence here in the in the facility, but you you be comfortable. Now, I know we like to fellowship, we like to interact, we like to shake hands, we like to hug necks, we like to do all that. Again, we're not going to police that, but we ask you to be respectful. We ask you to be um, intentional about your desires and, you know, use common sense, all right? So if you desire to, to wear a mask or, or whatever, do so. No one's going to think anything of it, but if you desire also not to, do that as well. No one's going to think anything of it. Also, just use common sense and respect one another as it relates to however we're going to interact with that. All right? So, <clears throat> the main thing that I want to communicate about this is this is the next step. Well, we've been doing what we're doing today for 10 weeks now. And this is the next step to us opening back up. We will have a live stream of every service, which, by the way, today, you've probably already noticed, we're using our uh, new camera and we're using our new audio software, so it may be a little bit better, a little bit more robust, the components we have, but this system will be piping live stream to Facebook, and we're also gonna be adding live stream to YouTube starting very soon. So, if you're uncomfortable coming, you say, well, I'm gonna let some of them get out there and see what happens. The live stream will be here for you. You don't have to come next week. You're welcome to come. And we ask you to do it in the manner that we've said. But if you don't want to come, that is cool. You'll have the Facebook live stream here for you for the 9 o'clock service and the 11 o'clock service. You get two services next Sunday. And then we'll move forward. Hopefully, it is my prayer, it is my desire, hopefully we won't have to do this for very long. Hopefully we can go back to one service, we can be together, and, and, and we'll have the live stream for those of you who can't come or who have to work or whatever, but pray with me that this resolves soon within the next couple of months and we can be together at the same time. So let me review again. So we're clearly communicating today. We are going to have live services here with you next Sunday. There's going to be two services starting May 17th. There's going to be a service at 9 a.m. and a service at 11 a.m., okay? If you have the first letter of your last name is A through M, we're asking you to come to the 9 o'clock service. If the first letter of your last name is N through Z, we're asking you to attend the 11 a.m. service. And I thought about this this morning. I thought all those people who have, you know, W, Y, Z names, you're always kind of looked over, but this time you're blessed because the people with early letters get to, have to get up early and come to church. <laughs> you get to sleep in a little bit. So, again, let me reiterate that. 9 a.m., First letter, last name, A through M. 11 a.m., first letter, last name, N through Z. We're going to have the rows out of the sanctuary. We're going to do some cleaning and disinfecting. Oh, one other thing we talked about, too. All the doors will be propped open. We're going to try to minimize the cross-contamination as much as possible. It seems so silly, but I think we need to do it in good wisdom and good protection until we see what happens. All right? So I look forward to seeing you in person uh, next week. All right. This week we'll be giving more communication about that. You'll see another Facebook post or two and some information out on our websites and things like that. So I really look forward to seeing you next week. God is going to bless us, I'm sure. Don't forget to give. Don't forget all of our platforms of information. Don't forget that we're still engaging as much as possible. If you have a need, call your elder, communicate about what your needs may be. We'll see you next week. All right. So today is Mother's Day, right? If your mom is close by you at home or even in this room, if your mom is close by you, tell your mother right now again, Happy Mother's Day. Matter of fact, if you haven't yet, get out your phone, text your mom, call your mom, tell her Happy Mother's Day, all right? We appreciate you moms. We love you moms today. You're, an, you're a blessing to us. If you don't have your mom, um, I bet you realize you, you wish, and, and I'm, I'm sure that, that, that you would, you could call heaven and uh, send her a little text and say, hey, mom, I love you, thinking of you today. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about moms 
Um, and then we're going to move on with the rest of the day so you can enjoy being with your mom. I read this um, a few years back, and I came across it again this week, and I thought it was funny. Um, think about this. This is entitled, Things Moms Teach Us. Mothers teach us about foresight, because they make quotations like this. Make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. <laughs> Mothers teach us about logic. If you fall out of the tree and break your neck, don't come crying to me. These don't go over very well when the room's dead. <laughs> Feels a lot different when the room's empty, but I hope you're enjoying them. Mothers teach us about maturity. Eat your vegetables or you'll never grow up. Mothers teach us about religion. You better pray that that comes out of the carpet. Mothers teach us about time travel when they say, if you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. Yep. Mothers teach us about contradictions. Shut your mouth and eat your dinner. <laughs> Mothers teach us about contortionism. Will you look at the dirt on the back of your neck? How are you supposed, how are you supposed to do that? I don't know. Mothers teach us about perseverance. You're going to sit here until you eat every last piece of that food, particularly broccoli or Brussels sprouts, somebody said. Mothers teach us about genetics. You're just like your father. <laughs> Mothers teach us about the weather. It looks like a tornado swept through your room. Mothers teach us about the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I can take you out. Yep, thanks to Bill Cosby for that one. Mothers are really awesome and good. Proverbs 31, verse 28 through 31. Her children respect her and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you out, you've outclassed them all. Charm can be misleading and beauty soon fades. The woman to be admired and praised is the woman who lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she deserves. Festoon her with praise. I like it. Festoon her with praise. That's the message version. Festoon means to adorn, to put, to put on a garment, or to put on a necklace. Like the lays in, 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 in Hawaii, when, when they put those on your neck, they are festooning you with that, gar that, that, that necklace, all right? So today, wh wherever you are, maybe you can just think of your mom or maybe your mom is with you, uh, festoon her with praise. Verse 28 says, Her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. Mom, you're doing a great job. Mom, I love you. I appreciate you. Mom, I know we haven't seen eye to eye, but I love you and thank you for giving me life and thank you for taking care of me when we were young. I think it's super important we take time and honor our mothers. So I want to speak to us as children today. Particularly, this message would be to my children. If I was giving my children advice about their relationship with mom, this is four things I would say. Learn from your mother. Proverbs 23 verse 22 says, Listen to your father who begot you. And do not despise your mother when she is old. Listen and learn from your mother. It says there in verse 22, do not despise your mother when she is old. Sometimes when our mothers age or when our mothers grow older or maybe even when we grow to a certain age, we begin to think we know more than our mother knows. Or we begin to think, Isaac, Caden, and Bella, that I have more knowledge in my 18 or fewer years than my mother in her <clears throat> years has. You know, that's just not true. Do not despise your mother when she is old. Do not despise her. Do not turn off and despise the teaching of your mother. Learn from your mother. Shirelle and I, not too long ago, were having a conversation about our families and about our parents and the older we get, those of you who are a little further in the journey than we are, you know this. The older we get, the more we realize we're like our parents. Because whether we want to or not, there's imprinted DNA in us from personality. And then there's cultural things that are 
imprinted on us from being around them and we, we begin to look like them and act like them. And that's not a bad thing. Don't despise that. You say, well, my mom didn't treat me right or my mom didn't this or my mom, I just haven't had a good relationship with my mom. I fully understand that. I see that, they, every, that, that everybody's context is different, yet God blessed us with life through our mother. And there's a desire in all of us to know them and learn from them and to honor them in the manner of they have pressed on us life. I mean, let's face it. They gave birth to us, right? Learn from your mother. Don't despise them when she is old. Now, if you're at home and, and you're, you're, a, you're a minor, I'm encouraging you, specifically my children, Isaac, Caden, and Isabella, you don't need to be despising your mother. All right? Don't despise her. Listen to her. Do what she says. And all the moms said in a loud amen. There's a few in here that are quiet. Sherelle, where are you? Say amen. Thank you. <laughs> amen. Care for your mother. John 19, 26 through 27. This is an act of Jesus. John chapter 19, verse 26 and 27. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. I think by the model of Jesus, we are taught caring for our mothers. Now, we, Jesus' earthly father had already passed. This was at his, at his crucifixion. He was hanging on the cross. His last breath was about to come out of him. Literally, the last thing that was going to come out of his physical body as the Savior of the world, the only begotten Son of God, he looks down and he cares for his mother. Right? He looks at his mother and he says, Mother, this is your... Or he says to John... No, he says, excuse me. He says to his mother, Mary, this is your son. Now who is John? John is one of his best friends on earth. And John and his mother Mary and another are there at the foot of the cross. And he looks down and instead of looking at them and saying, I'm sorry for dying or whatever, he cares for his mother. Mother, this is your son. In other words, Mary, my mom, John is your son. It wasn't biological, but it was by appointment. And then he turns and says, John, this is your mother. And the whole intention there was, I'm leaving. I've got to go away. He's caring for his mother in those moments. Man, that's good. That's true love. That's real love. That's, that's part of caring for one another. It's God's will and it's the example of Jesus Christ that we care for our mothers. So don't wait until it's the last dying breath. Now, Jesus gave the example of caring for His mother for years. The entirety of His life, He cared for His mother. Now, mothers, let me speak to you for a moment. Don't take advantage of the care from your children. A lot of times moms expect, oh God, I'm sorry moms, I'm having to preach to you a little bit. Please forgive me. Moms, don't expect your children to do things that are unrealistic. They have their lives. They have their things going on. But there's this respect and honor of moms being cared for by their children and children caring for their mothers and fathers too. But we're talking about mothers today. So don't forget children to care for your mother. Now, most of us will go and do something with our mothers today if they're still around. Care for them today. But don't let it be a one-day deal. Care for your mother. Call your mother. Check on your mother. If Jesus' last breath on earth, or one of His last breaths on earth, was to see to it that His mom was cared for, I think we should see to it that our moms are cared for too. Amen. Moms, it's another time for you to say amen. Sherelle, thank you, baby. Amen. Uh-oh, Proverbs 1, 8 through 9. Proverbs 1, 8 through 9. 1, 8 through 9. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be a, grace, a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. Hmm, obey your mother. All right, Isaac, Cade, and Isabella, I'm speaking to you. Obey your mother. Amen. Are you hearing me? Obey your mother. Finley, Taylor, listen to me, Finley. I know you're hearing. I hope you are. Obey your mother. 
right? Our, the Norris girls, obey your mother. All you Jaeger kids, obey your mother, right? Hey, hey, Robbie, I know your mom's, Robbie Faulkner, I know your mom's gone on to heaven, but obey your mother, right? Willie Scott, obey your mother. Hey, the Scott children, obey your mother. You got good parents. You got a good mama. Listen to your mama. Obey your parents. Obey your mother. The scripture says, My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. Okay? That's not just the household rules, which they're there, right? Isaac, Caden, and Bella know what they are, but they cross them all the time. Amen, Miller kids. Cross them all the time, right? But you know what they are, obey them. Do what is there. But, but it's not only just talking about the law of the household. It's also speaking to the law of God. Most of our mothers, thank God we've got virtuous mothers. Most of our mothers understand the principles in the law of God. And they're instituting those into your life in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Obey them. Walk them out. Obey them. Hey, if you're already grown and you're not in the household with your mom anymore and she's still around... She put some, she instilled some things in you. She put some stuff in you. Obey your mother. For they will be, verse 9, for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. A graceful ornament on your head. When we have, when we walk in obedience to our mothers, there's a graceful ornament of the law and the love of God that rests on our head. And they're, they're chains of, not chains of burden, but chains of glorious revelation of God's beauty. You know, they adorn themselves with head coverings. They adorn themselves with, with different chains of gold and silver. It was, it, was an, it was an act, it was an ornament to showcase the blessings of God. So obeying your mother is. And lastly, honor your mother. See, there's a difference between obeying and honor. Obeying is walking out the things that your mother has put in you. Honoring is doing so through obedience, but honoring according to Exodus chapter 2 through 12. Let's look at that. Exodus chapter 20, excuse me. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. It's one of the laws of God given to Moses in the Ten Commandments. Verse 12, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. Honor your mother. Honor her. Honor her. One of the greatest ways to honor your mother is to think morally of her, more highly of her than you do yourself. Right? Think in, think in an honorable way of, of ways that you can serve her, but also just in positive attributes of thinking and living, honoring her. Man, I respect you. I lift you, mother, from a place of, of, of thought less than... I, I don't think less than of you. I think highly of you. I honor you. I give you right. I give you, I give you way. You know, it could be in some of the most simple aspects or some of the greatest aspects. It, I honor you by bestowing upon you this, or I honor you by respecting your word. I value your opinion. Honoring means that we, we lift them and we, we think of them more highly than we do ourselves. The, the thing that cannot reside hand in hand with honor is pride. Honor and pride are oil and water. When you honor your mother, you humble yourself before her. And you, you say, she say, I honor you with humility, mom. You're my mom. I appreciate you. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have conversations and you can't work through issues. It doesn't mean that it's, it's, it's misconstrued that, that mom is never wrong. No, mom is sometimes wrong. But you don't dishonor mom when she's wrong. You, you know, sometimes mom, sometimes mom gets, gets things twisted up and sometimes mom just is a crab. Sometimes mom just has a bad day and, and it's difficult. You don't, you don't lower the honor. You keep the honor there, but, but you respectfully discuss, hey mom, you're having a bad day. That's not right. You can't do that. Most of the godly women that we have in our lives understand that they can be honored as well as held accountable. And I love that about my wife Sherelle as a mother. Because 
She knows that she sometimes doesn't do things right. Matter of fact, she defaults to, it's my fault. And half time, it's not her fault. Three quarters of the time, it's not her fault. 99% of the time, it's not her fault. I keep going, baby. You'll be right all the time. Most of the time, it's not her fault. But the, she's got such a humble heart that she thinks, what did I do? Or how can I, what, how can I be better? It's so easy to honor her because she never takes a prideful position as a mother, now as a wife. But, but as a mother is what we're talking about. As a mother, she's, <laughs> she, she's, she's an honorable person. It's easy to honor her. Moms, learn the, con, learn, learn, learn the selfless, selflessness character of Jesus, and we honor you regardless of your rightness or your wrongness. Honor your mother. So four things there. Learn from your mother. Care for your mother. Obey your mother. Honor your mother. And I like to end with that honor your mother because here's the kick with that law. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. It's the command with, the, with, with you. It's a plug and play deal. It's a reap and sow deal, right? Honor your mother. God's going to grant you days on the earth. In other words, you want to die quick? I brought you into this world. I can take you out. <laughs> Honor your mother. God will grant you length of days. Now, again, I've hit it in my conversation here multiple times. You may not have the best relationship with your mother. Your mother and you may be on the rocks. But it doesn't change the fact that she's your mother. It doesn't change the fact that she still is the one who gave life to you, carried you in, for nine months in her womb. It still doesn't change the fact that, that when you say, well, she passed me off. I don't even know who my mom is. I get it. That's a hard thing, and I don't want to throw any stones to that at all. But there was a mother that came along in your life. More than likely, there was a mother who came along in your life. She may not have given birth to you, but somebody came along and was a mother figure to you. Honor your mother. Honor those who have impressed upon you as mothers in your life. I don't take lightly these days because I'm thankful that God puts these type of days in our life so that we can remember the truth and the reality of these things. And I don't want to skim over them, right? I know we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Easter, we do so much for all of the sacraments and all the things that happen around us and our Christian faith. But I'm, 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 a, I'm a huge proponent of families. I think we need to be remembering our mothers on days like this. Our fathers on days like we honor them because this is the heritage the Lord has given us. These are the ones who have impressed upon us life and how to live it. So I honor you, Mom. I love you, Charlene. You're a good mom. I honor you. I lift you up today and thank God for you and all the other moms in the house too. We love you and we honor you. If you're a child and you're with your mom today and you're sitting there with them, I'm going to ask you, I mean literally, some of you moms don't even like to be affectionate, but all the kids listening to me, all of you, go ahead right now, get up and give your mom a hug. Go ahead, go ahead, go give them a hug. Why are you sitting where you're sitting, Isaac and Caden and Bella? Get up and go give your mom a hug. Go give your mama a hug. Honor your, my kids are right over there doing that. <laughs> Honor your parents today. There's plenty of people sitting around watching this or in this room who don't have their mom to do what you're doing right now. Love them, honor them today. Let me pray for you, Mom. Father, we glorify you and we thank you again for how beautiful and awesome you are. Thank you for the beauty you revealed to us in creation by giving us moms. You have revealed a, an amazing attribute that is in you as our Creator, in the women who are our mothers. We honor them today. We bless them today. We lift them before you and we pray that you give them what we cannot give them. Bestow upon them, festoon them, God, with your blessing and with your praise. Lord, I don't know what we'd do without moms. There's no other way that we can be incubated to life. Yeah, dad comes along and does his deal, but mom cares for us. He gives us nurturing and life. 
After birth, sometimes moms just get really crazy and, and give away their children. I never can understand that. But God, even, even if after birth they give away their children, the natural tendency of a woman and a mom is to nurture and care for the life of a child inside her body. What a gift. What a blessing. We honor them today. I pray that every family would go out of their way to kiss and hug and bless their moms today. Because I believe it's part of your will and your plan. Because again, when you were dying on the cross, Christ Jesus, you cared for your mom. You saw it as an important thing to care for your mom and see that she was tended to for the rest of her years. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of moms. We honor you and we bless you in Christ's name. Amen.